we got a pretty severe head cut here, right? You can see where I've got the blue line laid out just, just at the brink of the drop off. So the same principle we talked about at the rock rundown applies to the Zuni bowl. So the idea of the Zuni bowl, the water right now comes off really fast in a steep drop and has lots of power to pick up these little rocks and wash them away. Okay, if the water falls in a series of drops, then it comes to a stop, and then starts up, drops again, comes to a stop. So it doesn't have that velocity or power to move the sediment and erode the lip of the head cut. So we're building a step falls with the Zuni bowl. So the water pours over, gets captured in a little pool and drops and that cuts the height of the drop from about three feet to two 18 inch drops. And then we add in one rock dam down here and that pools the final and that's another foot that's of pooling instead of uh, concentrated flow, okay? What we're gonna do to prepare the site is we'll remove these dead sagebrush so we got room to work and then uh, we'll slope this back. This slope on this side is is pretty much what we want. But this side is pretty steep, isn't it? Person in the, in the orange shirt is, is uh, installing footer rocks for a small one rock dam to be placed downstream from the Zuni Bowl to pool water and uh, uh, have another drop in the uh, three, three drop system here. So the next step is uh, we, need a footer, we? we need a footer right about right there somewhere. Yeah, that's that's good. You lay them parallel with the direction of flow, you get more footer effect than having them sideways. sideways. Okay. The soil that he scraped out to make the trench for the footer rocks were stashing it upstream from the footer, so it's level. We're going to build a dam for the pool, okay? So the biggest rocks we got can go across overlapping the footer rocks, okay? So put this tallest one in the middle maybe and then work on either side. So now what we're going to do is we're, we have the dam, okay? So now we're going to lay a row of flattish rocks right around here. And kind of make a flat area like this where the rocks to set in. Gonna slope rocks back against this um, battered layers into the slope, but I need a stable um, base rock. Well, I'm not gonna call it a footer because it conflicts with the term, but a stable row of rocks right around the bottom of this uh, slope, okay? So I like that. Okay. And then the next one did the same thing. Okay. On okay. There, okay. something like that all the way around, okay? okay. Like a horseshoe shaped, yeah, that would be a good one. Lean the next Roll of rock into the bank like that. Okay, so yeah. it's partially supported by the bank and partially by the rock below it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's perfect. Even though this is like hanging out. Yeah, that's all right. It's okay? Yes. Now that, there you got it. Okay, now we got a surface we can work on. Okay. okay. You don't have any rocks in the middle? Nope, that's last. Oh, you do put some smaller rock in there? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's looking pretty good. So we want to maintain this angled uh, deal, so, so don't end up with them flat. Just keep them so they're angled all the way around with each additional row. And up the bank? Up the bank, yep. We're somewhere over halfway done on this. 
So we're getting a, so the, all these rocks slant into the hill. You can see how that's working out now pretty nicely. Okay, so we need another row to get to here. They may need to be book stacked to make them work, but we don't want, we want to be at this elevation, not higher, not lower. Okay, we may have to trim this soil a little bit to make those rocks fit. fit. This one's too high. It ought to go right here where, where there's nothing. What we haven't done yet is, is a layer of this size rock right here in the bottom right here. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the right. We need one more little rock right here. That one or this one. And what does that do exactly? That prevents that loose dirt on the bottom from being washed away. This is a really good example of a battered rock. It's, it's leaning into the bank behind it and it's partly supported by the bank and partly by the rock below it. If we had them stacked vertically, the water can run behind them and loosen the spot and then they just tumble into the pool. So it's really key to get this effect. It's just demonstrated really nicely right there. Okay. The way this is going to work now is the water comes down the valley and pours over right here. It can't dig this out anymore. Okay. And the water seeps in behind these rocks and is protected from evaporation by the mulching effect of the rock. So we'll get a strong zone of grass growing all around the edge here within a year or two. Okay, and that, those grass plants will hold this very fine soil in place and stop the head cut from moving up valley. So this will become the wettest place around now. Before we built it, it was the driest. Okay, kind of wrapping this up, we we built uh, one each of the basic structures that we use for erosion control and, and uh, dry gullies. And uh, we learned how to use the rock and stack it properly so it wouldn't wash away. And we talked about <laughs> the function of each of the different kinds of structures and how the uh, erosion of the gully will, will stop and we'll begin to get that position and about where and how vegetation will uh, uh, reinvade the site and uh, stabilize the site over time. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed today's session and and we've got a good basic uh, understanding now of how these most uh, basic of structures uh, can be built and how they will function. And thanks for your attention.